Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Pound for Pound Leader Podcast with Mike Kai. Thank you for joining us today. Today, we have a great episode for you. Another incredible interview with Mike Kai as we kind of dive into the staff meeting of Inspire Church and address some questions that go across leadership as well as culture and what's happening in the world. You don't want to miss this one. Check out the podcast interview with Mike Kai. So uh, I, I just would like to say that what a great weekend with, um, with our man camp. Mm -hmm. uh, our man camp was incredible. Um, to be able to pull off a man camp seven months within each other yeah. and to be able six months, seven months, and still be able to raise the funds for it and, and get 300 or more men to it. When the one before that, we had 400 men, right? I think this one, we shut it down earlier because we had to uh, because of the, um, the campsite and their rec requirements, which is, which is unfortunate because... 50 to 100 men who could have experienced it, experienced that at the last moment, uh, could have experienced it. I think what we're building is an army. I think th this army called Kingdom Man is mm, huge. Yeah, right. And man, we can, I honestly think that we can change Hawaii yeah. with the effect yeah. that God is doing yeah. with the men. So um, I think that um, when God moves in men, man, I tell you what, I mean, God, will al God always seems to move in women. God always seems to move in kids. But it's always the man that's a little bit slower, except for guys like us. Um, yeah. You know, he, he, when he touches a man, he touches the whole family, right. yeah. the whole family. Things Absolutely. get reconciled. Um, even their um, kids that he doesn't have custody over gets changed um, because now he realizes responsibility. Alimony gets paid, mm -hmm. right? Time is now invested into their own kids. Now that that we're not even we're not even talking about the ones that are married and who still have to engage with their own children, right. um, and so that begins to change. Uh, it changes a church, but it could change a state, yeah. Yeah. and that's why I, I, I so believe in kingdom man. I had somebody call me up. Uh, I talked to him on the phone yesterday, and he said that he would like to donate more money for if you sign up this week or next week and you sign up for a future friend, that future friend gets 50% off. Nice. And he's going to cover that other 50%. Wow. So while the iron is hot, I think we have to strike and make sure that it happens because we need the biggest man camp ever. And we need our own campsite in Jesus' name. Come I'm on. believing for Dillingham Ranch to be ours in Jesus' oh, name. I'm just come calling on. it out. So Mr. and Mrs. Dillingham, <laughs> if you're watching this, wow. why don't you bequeath it to Inspire Church hey. Give it to us yes. for a one dollar for for a dollar yeah. for one dollar, and then you will get an amazing tax write-off. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a deal. Yeah. That's awesome. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll jump right into this. Okay. First of all, thank you, Pastor Mike, for just the ways you've always been pouring into the staff and um, and the opportunity now to kind of share this with the rest of the world. Yeah. So we're gonna hit some leadership questions, culture questions, we're gonna hit all kinds of things and whatever you wanna say, um, we'd love it. So um, we'll just kind of hit it off pretty easy because you know, we're coming off camp, we're seeing of course the necessity, we've got uh, youth camps coming up, new leaders rising up, especially young ones. And um, how would, what would, when raising up a new leader, after you've already identified, hey, they've got the character, they got the culture, what are like a few of the top skills you would say, okay, let's equip them with this. Like if they're going to step on this team, if they're going to be leading in any way, let's start with these key areas. Okay, first of all, this, they're coming in with, the, with character first. Yeah. Okay, to the best of our ability, we can tell character. To the best of our ability, we can tell character. Then you come in with competency. So we're going to hit the competency one. Okay, then you've got chemistry. So they can't be awkward mm. working with us. They have to be able to gel. They have to be able to flow. They have to, that, right. That's important. Personality is important. Mm -hmm. okay? Chemistry. Character, competency, chemistry, and there is, um, the fourth one is culture. Okay? And they, they learn the culture. A lot of them carry the culture, but then they understand the culture because they've been in a church long enough. But then there are times that they're coming totally from the outside, cold turkey, and they have to learn the culture. Right. Well, Here's the other thing is if you grew up in Hawaii, you get two cultures. Number one, you get the, the, the Aloha spirit culture. Mm -hmm. And secondly, you already get the, you're going to learn the, the church culture. I feel like if that really hits my chin, I feel like I'm getting shocked. But what happens is you have to, when you move to Hawaii, you will experience culture shock. Mm -hmm. You're going to get culture shock. Yeah. No matter how much you think this is beautiful sure. or how much people say, I want to live in Hawaii. And, you know, I want to I live there. It's my dream to live in Hawaii. Well, there will be a level of culture shock mm. because um, especially if you come from the mainland because now you're going to have to figure out what schools do my kids go to, what neighborhood do I live in. So there's going to be a level, level of culture shock. Yeah. 
Uh, so then, then we got to hit the competency. Mm. See, this is the this is this is the toughest part. Um, culture would you would seem to think would be the toughest par part. Character flaws mm. will show up, um, and you're going to see that every now and then. But when it's the competency, the most important things that people have to have. Number one, the number one skill I'm looking for is a willing heart. Mm. That's good. I'm not going to teach you how to do your job. I'm expecting there are other people who are already on this team that can teach you to do your job. But you have to be able to have a willing heart. Hmm. If you have a willing heart, that means you're willing to let go of your way so you can learn another way. Hmm. And good. sometimes uh, another way is actually the best way. Yeah. Okay? So there are a lot of people that used to work on staff here, and I'm so grateful for them, the ones that have left well, and they're doing really good outside. They're doing really good outside. And I just want to say you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say you're welcome. I, I honestly, I want to say you're welcome. Good job, man. Well done. Well done. Because all of what are, you were here are two years or five years or 15 years, if you're not crushing it outside, that's on you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the, the leadership that we get here at Inspire, from the preaching to the guests mm -hmm. to the conferences yeah. to all of that, I'm telling you, and, and so much more, mm -hmm. this is the place where, man, if you are, you, you, you're going you're gonna to do so good in here if you have a willing heart. But then you're going to do well on the outside as well. Yeah. You're gonna, you, you, you should. You absolutely should. That's so good. So, Pastor Mike, on that, yeah. um, you have iterated time and time again where, you know, how you started out as a younger leader to where you are today. Um, there is a global influence on you. There is a massive kingdom, kingdom influence. So you have this, you can, you can go between the marketplace and in the ministry world very easily. You can relate to business leaders, CEOs, and kingdom, like church, church leaders, what were some of the things that you did even early on that helped you to grow in your influence as a leader? I think one of the biggest things was you have to make yourself likable. Like I, I, didn't, I wasn't born with this personality. I mean, I would say that I was always an, a nice, sweet kid. Um, and there was a, there was a, 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 a you know, a second son thing. You know what I mean? And my older brother, he was, he was two years older, better you know, baseball, and I always tried to catch up. I couldn't catch up um, until maybe, yeah, I mean, he was really good in, in basketball and baseball. So I was second son, so you got that. You know, there's a little bit of a drive. I, I want mine too. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I realized very early on, before I even entered into the ministry, how being likable was absolutely important. Mm -hmm. And so a, a book that I read back in the day, I read this book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. How to Win Friends and Influence People. I, 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 I listened to that title, and I thought for a moment when I heard that title, I was like, wow, what a loser title. <laughs> <laughs> How to Win Friends. Well, you don't have enough friends? What's going on? What's wrong with you? You know what I mean? Like, if I pick up this book, there's something wrong with me. I don't have any, in, enough friends. How to Win Friends and Influence People. It sounds kind of leveraging in some ways, but actually it's not how to win friends, how to be likable, how to influence people. Right now, one of the biggest industries, so to speak, are, are those who are influencers. Mm. Social influencers are making millions of dollars. They are influencing people to purchase things, right. to live this lifestyle, to buy this, to buy that. How to win friends and influence people. I think that book, I read it at nine, 20 years old because I, I had to leave college. Since so when I left college, you know, eventually when I went from full-time to part-time to no-time, I still needed to educate myself. So I read books, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I said, be likable. Mm. Man, when you are likable, you make yourself likable, people are going to like you. Not I'm trying to Im manage my image at all. Yeah. Then, then you naturally become a likable person. Right. People right. are going to want to be like you. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. want to be around you because they just like who you are. There's, and I think a lot of us on this staff, you, everybody's like that. When yeah. they're walking through the lobby, they're looking for Pastor Brian, and they see his face, Right. They see Dominic Jones in the parking lot. They love, their, they, they, they love that personality. I think people buy into you in the lobby before they buy into you on the mm, platform. Come on. That's good. Mm, print that. That's good. That was good. Yeah. Speaking of like the friendships that you have yeah. and um, the friendships that are developed with people and then someone comes on staff or someone comes under your leadership, there's always this. Can you just speak about that balance between being someone's boss and being someone's friend and you know that that area where things can become too familiar but you still want to be able to 
speaking to their lives, you still want to confront them. You still want to. You lead talking them. about from my my, my vantage yeah, point? Yeah, you, from your vantage point, and just even for people who are stepping into leadership and suddenly they're leading or on staff, and now they're leading their friend and. Okay, let me let me speak more to that, that one instead of in, instead of mine. Okay. Because because mine is unique. I'm the only one like this. All right, right. Okay. Um, I think for everybody, I, I, I think when you are a leader, God has called you to live another level, hmm. to live at the next level. And so when you have friends that are, are you talking about friends who are on staff? Yeah, no, no, just like you're having, you're, uh, there's a friendship, but then suddenly now you're a leader over them or you're a staff member over them or okay. even friends on staff, and, but one is over the other in terms of authority you got you to gotta get over your insecurity. Because if, you, if you're going to lead insecure, then you're never going to lead anybody to any potential mm -hmm. or even your ministry to the full, fullest potential. Yeah, so if you have this leadership insecurity that, oh, we were once peers, now I'm above you. Oh, I don't know how to handle that. Get over it. You have to get mm -hmm. over it quick. Because we don't have one year for you to get over that insecurity. Right. We don't have two years. You have to get over it. Just realize that you are called. Mm -hmm. God called you here. God didn't call them. God yeah. called you. And if yeah. God called you, pick up that responsibility, a.k.a. a mantle. Right. Put it on yourself, and you don't need to be patted on the back every day yeah. to tell you that you belong here. Yep. Go prove yourself that you belong here. We already thought you belong here. We already hired you because we thought you belong here. And once you're there, now prove it. Prove why you, you prove it. Earn, live up to it. Not earn it. Live up to why we hired you. Don't like I've seen people that have been hired before. Super incredible volunteers there every day. Want to be there every moment, and then all of a sudden they get hired, and now there's a spirit of entitlement comes upon them, mm, and wow. they start kicking back, and they're going, "I'm not getting paid enough, or I'm not getting this time, that time, prime time, no time." All that kind of stuff. And I go, what happened to the what happened to that volunteer spirit? What happened to mm, that that good. attitude that got you on, on staff should keep you on staff. So good. Oh, you touched a nerve. Come on. <laughs> what other attributes would you uh, coach, encourage your twenty six year old self or your twenty two year old self, knowing what you know now, what would you tell that young Mike Kai? Let's go. Well, I tell him, I tell him your future is amazing. Mm. I'll tell you, yeah, grow up a little bit. Your future is going to be amazing. Yeah. I said, don't think, don't, don't be so sensitive. Mm. I would tell myself, um, um, you did belong here. Okay. You're here because God called you. I would tell myself, not 22, 22 is too young. I wasn't even on staff yet. You talking about my young staff? Or 26. 26. Okay. Same thing. Um, don't be sensitive. Don't be too eager. Um, um, don't tell everybody what you want to do in your heart. Keep it there for a while. Let the Lord work on it. Uh, learn submission. L learn how to do whatever you can do. Say yes to whatever they, they mm -hmm. offer you. Because you're going to be well-rounded. And one day you're going to be able to tell, tell, tell even the creative department some things because you were leading a creative department. You're going to be able to prove to people who do outreach that you led outreach. So you have, you, can, you have authority on every level because you did everything in the church, mm -hmm. everything in the church. Yeah. So I would tell myself at 26 years old, stay close to Jesus more than anything else. Don't mess up your marriage. Mm -hmm. Don't get caught up in pornography. Mm -hmm. Don't let money get into your heart. Yeah. If you keep it out of your heart, God will always keep it in your pocket. Yeah. I would tell myself, mm -hmm. keep on giving. You can never outgive God. Uh, I would tell myself, take more risks financially. Buy, buy a house earlier than you did. Buy your second house earlier than you would. I'd save, save your money. Um, work hard. Work two, three jobs if you need to. Do whatever you need to do. That's what I would tell my 26-year-old mm -hmm. self. But not to work the other jobs anyway. Yeah. Right. Awesome. What, what did, culture? Well, let me ask this one question. What advice would you give someone who feels overlooked on an opportunity that they feel they, they've earned? Join the club. Hmm. Get over it. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> what would I tell somebody who feels like they're overlooked? Yeah. Join the club and get over it. <laughs> good, good, good. That's good. Because your time will come. Yeah. Let God, let God make, make it happen. It yep. Let God Amen make it that. happen. Amen make that. yourself so good yeah. that it's undeniable. Come on. Yeah. Make yourself so good in an area that it's undeniable that everybody sees. But don't toot your own horn. Don't toot your own horn. And don't take out your violin too often yeah. because self-pity does not look good on you. Oh, that's yeah. good. God knows when it's your time. Hmm. Better than any man knows when it's your time. Yeah. There's your time. 
There's their time, mm. and then there's God's time. Yeah. Okay? You might have yourself on a timetable that is faster than the timetable that your boss has for you. Your boss might have a slower timetable yeah. because they're looking at character, competency, chem chemistry, um, culture. They're looking at all of these different things. And when all of these things begin to line up, okay, all of these things line up, then maybe the opportunity will come mm -hmm. sooner than, 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 than you can imagine, mm -hmm. okay? Sometimes people move on. Sometimes people get let go. Some people, your, your opportunity will come. But the other thing about this is don't, let, don't always be pining for an opportunity mm. because if you're pining for an opportunity, you're always looking for when is it my turn, when is it my turn. That's the worst thing because I could have gone there. I'm telling you, when I was working at, at the church that I was raised up in, um, I was the youth pastor, and so I was, getting, I was cutting my teeth preaching every Sunday night. Okay, that was my opportunity every Sunday night. Mm -hmm. So I didn't go like, oh, I want the big stage. Oh, well, how come Pastor Ralph doesn't ask me to preach? First of all, I had other guys ahead of me that were more seasoned than me. I probably was funnier. I probably was better. But they, they had paid more time. Mm. Okay? And, and they were, mm. to, to Pastor, they were probably a little bit more likable at that time. Okay? Mm. I was still edgy, still rough. Uh, but I was a youth pastor. Okay? So I, I only preached three or four times to the big church in 10 years. Mm. Wow. Yeah, I know. Amazing, huh? Yeah. Three or four times. And, and, and you know what? I, I used to think to myself, how come I'm not getting a shot? This is when my turn. But you know what? I stopped doing that. At some point, I just stopped. I said, you know yeah. what? I'm probably preaching right now to the best crowd I could ever ask for. Mm. Yeah. This is, not, this is yeah. high school kids who can blow you off. Right. Yeah. <laughs> They don't have to listen to you. These are high school kids that can roll their eyes. These are high school kids that are sharing notes, sharing, sharing stuff. I mean, I'm, I, I got to break up a fight in the middle of a sermon. That's, I'm getting, I mean, this is Jerry Springer in the church <laughs> on Sunday night. This is crazy. And you know what? I can't do that in a big audience. I had, I had people complain. Yeah. I had people complain once or twice that I was too funny, too gross in my sermons, <laughs> telling, telling stories. And, 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 and and pastor didn't like that. And so if, if he didn't like it, you wouldn't smell the pulpit for at least another six months to a year. Mm. That's the way it was. Yeah. If you ask to preach, automatically add another year. Wow. <laughs> Back in the day, that's the way it was, man. When you get raised up by baby boomers, you can't be a soft millennial. No. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Gen, X, Gen X cut our teeth, man. Gen X got, Gen X got worked by, by boomers. We got worked by boomers. Mm. And now when I look at millennials and I see how, how fragile, I'm like, get out. Come on. <laughs> give me a break. Give me a break. And so I only preached probably four times to the big church, and I was cool with that. And, and, and it, it never hurt me. Never yeah. hurt me. I was like, you know, pastor, pastor was a workhorse. Yeah. He, he didn't take a sabbatical. Never took a sabbatical. Um, I wish he did. He never took a sabbatical. Mm. He would take two or three weeks vacation and come right back, right back to work. He hardly took any time off. So he didn't necessarily need someone to fill the pulpit. But when he did, it was different guys. It was Ka'ala. It was Guy. Um, they were good. They were good. And so for me... I focused on the field God gave me. Mm. Oh, that's good. So how are, how, how are you preaching if you're running a children's ministry? Mm. Okay. Mm. Are you getting good with that Bible? That's you know, good. are you getting good with the stories? I'm seeing kids walk in here with picture Bibles sitting in the front row. I feel like they're testing me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah that's a joke. Um, serious. Like from the front row, picture Bible. This one kid, this eight-year-old got a picture Bible. I'm like, man, I want that picture Bible. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think some of you need that picture Bible. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is awesome, man. And, and so I cut my teeth in the field that God gave me, and that was youth ministry. I didn't despise the day of small beginnings. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I deserve a bigger crowd. No, I didn't deserve a bigger crowd. I actually, I think I've become a really good communicator mm -hmm. through that youth ministry. One of them we hear always, we always often hear people just saying, "Oh, how are you doing? I'm busy. Um, job busy. At, this is just people, people who are who are volunteering, and uh, or at their, their, you know, they're what, working their job. What, they're too busy to serve. Is that what you? You're well, they're they're busy. They know they need to serve, and they know that's the right thing to do. Um, and sometimes they're pulling back because they're too, too busy at work, and then they're trying to figure out how to, you know, work this and protect their family and have time for their family. What can you say to someone who's trying to figure all that out? Can you serve one day a week? One day a month? Can you serve one day a month? Just do something. Mm -hmm. Do yeah. something once a month. Like, 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 where else do you volunteer your time? Do you volunteer your time on, on your kid's mm -hmm. baseball team? Okay, good. Awesome. That's, I, I do too. 
I coached my kids in soccer. Mm. I coached Becca in soccer. I co coached Courtney in soccer. Mm. I would say start off by once a month. Find a project where the family can serve together. Go do a houseless, homeless outreach as a family together. Mm. Do it once a month. You have to serve. Because yeah. if you don't serve, then, then you're going to teach your family that it's all yeah. about us. Mm. Wow. It's mm. all about us. Mm. You've got to find places. I don't know about the word give back, but mm. you have to find a places where you can pour in. That's good. Places to pour in as mm. a family or as an individual. Daddy got to go. I got to go. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go help set up chairs um, at the, the, the service, and I'll be right back in about an hour, right? Yeah. Yeah. You got to be able Absolutely. to squeeze that in. And if you do, then that, that's good. What do you think are the biggest challenges that leaders are facing today? Leading when they're not recruiting. Mm. That's their biggest challenge. Mm. To me, it's not distraction. You could, we could go there. We could go distracted. Too much social media. They're always, their notifications are always on. Mm -hmm. They're always touching their phone. Okay, we could go there. Yeah, absolutely. But I actually think leaders who are not building their teams because mm -hmm. they're not inviting people into the process to use their spiritual gifts, let alone discover their spiritual gifts. Yeah. Yeah. Because we think that we got to do it all, of our, all by ourselves. And when we do it all by ourselves, then we think we make, I'm, going, I'm the only one that can do it, so I'm going to do it right, so I'm going to do it. Then we think we're making ourselves indispensable. No, mm -hmm. we're not making ourselves indispensable. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is we're putting a lid on the church, we're putting a lid yeah. on the ministry or whatever area that you lead because you don't think it's that important mm. to recruit a team. Mm. And wow. when you don't recruit a team, you're always stuck. Yeah. You're always dumping. You're always in mm. trouble because now the staff's going to have to rally and come to help you because you didn't build your team. Yeah. And building a team is one of the most important things that a leader has to do. Not only just build a team, but then pour into a team. Not a, the, the word pour into has been used a, a lot in Hawaii lately in some mm. circles. So I want to say this. Build a team. Encourage a team. Mm. Train a yeah, team. That's good. Yep. A, a create a esprit de corps around that team so mm -hmm. when they, they they look at their team say man we got the best leader and we got the best team yeah. you know why because we're going places mm -hmm. and yeah. we're learning stuff and we are we're, we've got this culture within the within this team that ex exudes what the the overall culture of the church is and so that is going really really good so the number one difficulty i'm finding in leadership is the leader that is not recruiting mm -hmm. people mm -hmm to the team, to join them in the journey, yeah. for them to discover their spiritual gifts, to find out yep. how amazing their life can be yeah. when they start so using good. their spiritual gifts. Mm. Because we either don't recruit for the team because we're insecure or we're lazy or we don't think it's that important. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. That's the number one wow. challenge of leadership yeah. today. Wow. Could you speak a little bit about developing that esprit de corps? That, because sometimes you see teams... If, if your team does not meet... And if your team is not learning, and if your team is not fun, mm -hmm. you have no team spirit. Mm. That's good. You have, you, you, have, you have a team spirit, but it's going to be boring. Mm. If you have trouble people coming to your meetings, it's not, their, it's, it's not their, their schedule. You're not making it worth to come. Oh, mm. wow. Whew. So if you're not having a little bit of food, yeah. if you're not having a lot of laughter, mm -hmm. if you're not recognizing people on the team, yeah. If you're not making sure that people are reading their one chapter of their book before mm. they come to the meeting, yeah. if there is not that, then you're not going to have a good team. Mm. So you, you have to make your meeting worth coming to. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like church. Yeah. You want church, you want people, to do, well, they come because of God. Absolutely, they come because of God. Mm. They come to church because they want Jesus. They come, they come because it's what they do. They come, but let me tell you, if it gets boring, mm -hmm. if it gets boring, they're not coming. Mm -hmm. They're not going to come if it's boring. Mm -hmm. So it has to be an enriching, beautiful presence, pauses, quiet, but power. Mm -hmm. It has to have all of that. Mm -hmm. And why not bring that down to the level of your team? Wow. Mm -hmm. Bring it so down good. to the level of your team. If you bring it down yeah. to the level of your team, let me tell you, your, your meetings, nobody's going to want to miss your meeting. Mm -hmm. And stop doing Zoom meetings already. Yeah. Stop meeting face yeah. to face. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So if there's that, that leader who might be new to starting that and building that into their team, what's a, what's a practical, fun thing that they could start off doing, like kicking off in their meeting? You got to be fun. 
you got to be fun. You got to be a fun person. Mm. You got to make it. You, you, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's it. You got to be fun. <laughs> if you're boring, I ain't coming to your boring meeting. Yeah. I'm coming because I have to. Right. But I don't, it's like, another boring meeting. You know, I don't want to go to a boring meeting. Boring so you be fun. Mm. I don't have an icebreaker, Clint. What's in, you ask me for an icebreaker. You just ask me for an icebreaker. <laughs> I don't have an icebreaker. I don't do icebreakers. No, just all right. kidding. All I'm, right, ha- I'm having fun with you. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I'm good. I like good. to embarrass you. I see I your face getting all red. It's all good. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine, Pastor. I'm good. Yeah, I'm yeah, good. yeah, you're good. You know, you, know what, you know what I called Clint on Saturday night? If, Ephesians 3.20, Clint. Let's go. Above and beyond. <laughs> above and beyond. <laughs> Clint, yeah. above and beyond Chinen. I said, because you go above and beyond. I was like, I'm always, like, I said, hey, Clint, can you get me a coffee before camp? Sure. What do you want? I said, I want a venti. Oh, he goes, okay, okay, I'll get you a venti. So he comes out, comes into the house that I'm staying at. He comes in with that big Starbucks card. <laughs> you said get the biggest no, one they no, had. No, 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 yeah. You know, you're thinking, oh, this is good. He can drink as much coffee as he wants all day. I'm thinking, what are you trying to do? Give me a heart attack? <laughs> I was just anticipating there was going to be another beyond. Man. That's what I love about him, above and beyond. <laughs> Amen. I love you. I love you, sir. And, and that doesn't mean, and I'm not saying you got too much sauce. Yeah. There's a difference between having too much sauce. Sauce is personality. Sauce is, you know, the whole package. And, and, and everybody in this room, got, everybody's got their own sauce. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I'm not talking about sauce. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. You're awesome. Yeah. Here's a question. How do you do it all? What makes something priority versus urgent? How do you do life and ministry? Um, the longer you put off something and it has a deadline, it suddenly becomes your highest priority. Hmm. So for me, I'd like to control my priorities up front, but then I get behind it, my priorities. And then all of a sudden, they, I, I get behind my priorities because of either traveling or because of the schedule or because of anything that can happen, right? And then behind schedule. I want to be up front. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes, I'm squeezing in a meeting. I need to have a coffee with that guy who's been asking for three months. Those kinds of things begin to happen. And so then that, all of a sudden, um, procrastination moves up your priority list. Mm. Okay, so for every leader here, the longer you procrastinate and you don't chip away at it every day or every week, you chip away at it, you chip away at it, and you, you work toward it, the longer you procrastinate, the tougher it is because now all of a sudden it becomes a priority. Yeah. And now the priority is no longer controlled by you. The priority is now controlled by someone else that needs your report mm. or needs mm. that film done or needs something from you. But the longer you procrastinate, you are no longer in control of your schedule. How do you build and maintain trust? To become a trustworthy person means that your yes, Jesus said, is yes. Mm -hmm. And your no is no. Mm -hmm. Not, I think I might do it. Yes, I will do it and don't do it. Mm -hmm. Or yes, I intend to do it, but I never got to it. That's all, that, that all affects your trustworthiness, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So you've got to be able to, we, uh, we, all, we all have to make sure that we can be relied upon. So if I can leave on a three-week break mm-hmm. and come back, that I am trusting that you are trustworthy, that everything you said you will do will get done. Mm-hmm. Then you can have more trust. So if you are working remotely, which we have a few, mm-hmm. which is a blessing mm-hmm. for them, that if you are working remotely and you say that you're going to get the, the work in, then I'm going I'm to uh, totally expect that your overseer is not going to have to chase you down, that you're going to actually turn it in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because we don't know what you're doing in your underwear and your bon- mm-hmm. eating, eating bonbons in front of your computer screen. We, we, don't, we don't know if, if, or if you're, you know, you're actually in a Pilates class mm. when you should be working. You know mm. what I'm saying? We don't, we don't know. I mean, did I out, off, okay. Um, we don't know if you're at the batting cage or at top golf. Yeah. You know? <laughs> okay, mm. I did two female things and I got to go to me. Okay, so anyway. We don't know what you're doing. Mm. But we have given you trust. Even, even to the point where some people are 
taking they they have different kind of different unique career paths mm-hmm. that take them away from us for a season or for a week or two or three and so you have to be trustworthy that you're going to do what you said you're going to do on when you when you get to do that mm-hmm. you get to have that opportunity to be able to do that that you, we got to be able to trust that you are a trustworthy person wow what an incredible time with mike kai and the staff at inspire church i hope you enjoyed that hey if you did make sure you subscribe make sure you share what's going on here we'd love to get this content to more people around the world so that they can grow to the next level in their leadership and don't forget to check out the website mikekai.tv to get more resources there as well as his incredible coaching platform you'll want to sign up for that again mikekai.tv thank you again for joining us for the pound for pound leader podcast Thank you.